During the fourth edition of Merck Africa Asia Luminary in Egypt, Merck Foundation was launched by First Ladies of Chad, Niger, Central African Republic, Guinea and Gambia and Chairperson of National Assembly of Namibia. Professor Frank Stangenberg Haverkamp, Chairman of the Executive Board of e Merck KG, emphasized the important role Merck Foundation plays to build healthcare capacity in Africa and Asia. Welcome to Merck Africa Asia Luminary today. And welcome to the Merck Foundation, which are, we are launching today on this prestigious platform to you, our partners. This luminary represents the annual forum of the Merck Foundation. It is the fourth edition, another valuable milestone of our strong and long-term commitment towards the social and economic development of Africa and Asia. We have delegates from the, the following, Angola, Bangladesh, Benin, Botswana, Burkina Faso, Burundi, Cambodia, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Chad, Congo, Egypt, Ethiopia, Gabon, Gambia, Ghana, India, Indonesia, Ivory Coast, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Kenya, Liberia, Malaysia, Mali, Mauritius, Morocco, Mozambique, Myanmar, Namibia, Nepal, Niger, Nigeria, Republic of Guinea, Russia, Rwanda, Senegal, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Sri Lanka, Sudan, Taiwan, Tanzania, Togo, Tunisia, UAE, Uganda, and Zambia. Today, in our luminary, we are going to be marking the launch of Merck Foundation, which is a very historic, historic uh, uh, event because it's the first year of Merck Foundation, which is the first foundation owned by Merck KGAA uh, Germany. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome you all in Cairo and to join Merck Foundation during this important occasion as they mark a new milestone of their partnership with Africa, focusing on innovative healthcare solutions, building healthcare and scientific research capacity, and empowering people on STEM. Currently, the Egyptian Minister of Health dispatches medical convoys to several African countries. Let me place my profound thanks and appreciation to Mark Foundation for organizing this important and noble event that has attracted a wide range of participants from more than 40 African and Asian countries. Essentially, the global gathering aims to addressing health challenges across Africa and Asia through partnership and capacity building initiatives for good mankind. The government of the Gambia appreciates the important role that non-state actors such as Mark Foundation are undertaking in partnership with governments and other organizations to support national health efforts. J'estime que cette initiative constitue une grande contribution pour renforcer les capacités en matière de soins de santé et pour améliorer l'accès aux solutions de soins de santé en Afrique et en Asie. Je suis fier d'inaugurer officiellement cette conférence avec mes sœurs, les premières dames du Tchad, de la République centrafricaine, de la Gambie et du Niger, ainsi que la présidente de l'Assemblée nationale de Tanzanie, de la Namibie et la vice-présidente de la Tanzanie, afin de partager cette vision. Ensemble, nous pouvons faire la différence. En tant que la Première Dame du Niger, nous reconnaissons et soutenons les programmes de la Fondation Merck pour réaliser sa vision et sa mission de renforcer les capacités des soins de santé et d'améliorer l'accès aux soins de santé dans nos pays, une noble cause que nous soutenons intégralement. Mesdames, Messieurs, je suis fier d'inaugurer officiellement cette importante conférence avec leurs excellences, les premières dames de la République de Gambie, de la République centrafricaine, de la République de Guinée, de la République du Tchad et la présidente de l'Assemblée nationale de Namibie pour travailler ensemble à la mise en œuvre de ces programmes.
dans nos pays et dans le reste de l'Afrique. Mes chères sœurs, premières dames, notre plaidoyer sera beaucoup plus orienté vers le pouvoir public, les décideurs et les partenaires pour une réflexion minutieuse, tendant une prise en charge des femmes stériles afin de les libérer de cette angoisse et de ce stress permanent. Dans ce plaidoyer et les actions à court terme, moyen et long terme, à mener, nous comptons énormément sur la Fondation Merck Africa Asia Luminerie, dont la riche expérience et l'expertise contribueront certainement à réduire le taux de la stérilité chez les femmes et surtout d'éradiquer ce fléau qui réduit considérablement le progrès de l'humanité. Ensuite, du 18 au 27 janvier 2017, une équipe de Merck est venue en République centrafricaine pour former les femmes infertiles, victimes de, st de stigmatisation. À cette occasion, 70 femmes ont été identifiées grâce aux outils d'identification développés par Merck. Ces femmes ont par la suite bénéficié d'une formation et d'un appui matériel dans le cadre d'une activité pilote de la campagne « Plus qu'une mère ». During the luminary, Merck Foundation awarded their excellencies, first ladies and ambassadors for Merck more than a mother. Ladies and gentlemen, would like to honor tonight the first lady of the Republic of Chad, Her Excellency Madame Hinda Debi Into. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Her Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of the Gambia, Her Excellency, Madame Fatumata Vafaro. The First Lady of the Republic of Guinea-Conakry, Her Excellency, Madame the First Lady of the Republic of Niger, Her Excellency, Madame Aisata Isufu Mahamadu. The First Lady of the Central African Republic. The Chairperson of the National Council Republic of Namibia. Honorable Margaret Mensa Williams. Several panels were held to discuss solutions to improve access to diabetes, fertility, and cancer access in Africa and Asia. We are going to discuss now with uh, each uh, member of the panel uh, regarding their own country and, and what is the Merck more than a mother contributed to the infertility challenge in each country or will contribute from their uh, uh, point of view and experience uh, in each uh, position. In Africa, land and property is core to a woman's life. Because for a woman who gets married and does not produce a child, where you are married, Inheritance is always attached to children. So for a woman who doesn't give birth, your lineage, your access to land will most likely be jeopardized because you don't have children. Because normally it's women with children that will be allocated land where to settle. In, in most of the African countries, most of the women who are barren will end up not having what to call a home. With the support of Mark more than a mother, also most of these women are getting income generating activity to support themselves, to purchase their property, to purchase their land. And in some circumstances, when they get this support from Mark more than a mother, then the husband starts changing, accommodating them, um, uh, you know, having them more nearer because they have economic empowerment. And sometimes that will support the woman to at least 
be in a society where where she can call home. Some people have, I mean, simple diseases, very simple. They don't know. Some of us are civilized enough to know how to do perennial care, but you have the woman in the village, in the urban and rural areas, they have to go to the farm. They don't have sanitary um, accommodations, facilities. They don't know how to wash themselves up. You can go from back to front, not knowing that you're creating an avenue for infectious diseases that can prevent you from having children. So what do you think about the campaign and how do you think it will contribute to South Africa in terms of training or in terms of uh, raising awareness about infertility stigma and breaking the stigma of infertility in, uh, in South Africa and other African countries? So I think the key for me is to strengthen the campaigns of advocacy in making sure that we build awareness amongst not only women, including men, because we can continue empowering women as we do all the time. But we also have to build awareness amongst men because if you don't educate the men too, it means they'll be left behind and continue be in denial. Starting this year, uh from, from this visit or this uh, event to uh, roll out Merk More Than a Mother in Niger. And uh, with uh, very uh, great honor that uh, uh, we have our, uh, Her Excellency First Lady to be the champion ambassador for Merk More Than a Mother in the country. So as your role as a Minister of Health, how do you see, first of all, the fertility challenge in uh, Niger? And how we, you see Merck More Than a Mother will contribute to remove this challenge or the stigma of infertility and improve access to fertility care. Infertile, et ce programme, en tout cas, serait le bienvenu au Niger parce que c'est vrai, nous avons mis en place un certain nombre de mécanismes pour améliorer la santé de la reproduction, la santé de la femme à travers la création d'un centre national de santé de la reproduction qui intervient dans le cadre de la prévention, puisque les causes, et du moins l'infertilité, a des causes multifactorielles. Au-delà de la femme, on ne voit que la femme. Each of these organizations, our own IFFS, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, who has novel teaching programs that could be brought to that, Vigo, who has uh, toolkits and the likes of that, uh, all of us need to work together, and you've allowed us to work together on a sustaining basis. The embryology program uh, is simply the paradigm. Uh, it's one that we've looked at. It's amazing that uh, the Merck Foundation and your program, Rasha, has realized that it doesn't take training for five, ten people. It train, takes training for huge numbers of individuals because we expect to continually expand the capacity for in vitro fertilization. And once you do that, you have to have a sustaining number of trainees. When Mac Foundation helps in this training, those who are trained should follow the law of Puto, that those who have knowledge, they must pass the torch. Don't hide that knowledge to yourself because one knowledge to yourself is of no value. As I used to say when I was, as a professor, a professor is known by not being the only professor, but by how many professors he has been able to produce. So let's multiply, and if you do so, the spread will be all over Africa. Has been the dean of medical school for nine years. I would like to cooperate with our Merck Foundation. I think my role uh, is to pray as a designer, educator, and most importantly, a cheerleader to uh, serve the society uh, we rely on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, being here, uh, Your Excellencies, uh, First Ladies. It's a great honor to have uh, uh, all of you to support and to be uh, ambassadors and champions for Merck more than a mother. 
Uh, my first question will go to Her Excellency, First Lady of uh, Chad. And uh, I, it, it, I, actually, I'm very, very honored to have you with us here. here and uh, I would like to know from your side, I know that you are very interested in women empowerment. And you've done a lot of activities and efforts in, uh, in Chad and in Africa regarding women empowerment. How do you see Merck More Than a Mother will fit and integrate with your already very successful programs in Chad? And how do you see that it will contribute to remove the stigma uh, from uh, the stigma in, uh, in Chad? You know that in Chad, women represent 52% of the population. Et comme je l'ai dit tantôt, l'Afrique est une. On a les mêmes us et les mêmes coutumes partout. On a nos réalités. Et les femmes stériles ont besoin de cette, de cette campagne, de cette sensibilisation. Elles ont besoin de nous, Première Dame, de vous, disons, ministres de nos États, de vous, décideurs politiques, et des hommes des médias pour qu'ensemble on puisse mener une très grande campagne pour qu'ensemble on, qu on puisse dire non à la stigmatisation des femmes stériles pour qu'ensemble on puisse redonner vraiment de l'espoir à la femme tchadienne et merci uh, I would like to know from your um, point of view uh, about your uh, of course activities and how we will integrate also Merck more than a mother uh, within your successful programs in Niger Et d'abord, je remercie la Fondation Merck pour euh, cette invitation et je la félicite d'avoir pensé à amener ce sujet à la face euh, de nos pays. Euh, parce que euh, l'infertilité partout en Afrique est, de, est un sujet tabou, euh, au Niger comme dans les autres pays d'Afrique et du monde d'ailleurs. Et donc, euh, je pense que Merck a le grand mérite d'avoir pensé à amener ça au devant de la scène. Et au Niger, euh, le Niger est un pays de, de contraste en matière de fertilité. Nous avons euh, le taux de fécondité, l'un des taux de fécondité le plus élevé au monde. Mais à côté, il y a des femmes, euh, et dans, euh, par rapport à ce taux, euh, il y a des femmes stériles et des femmes fécondes. Celles qui sont fécondes cherchent à avoir le maximum d'enfants. Et celles qui sont stériles, euh, cela fait grandir leur frustration. Parce que l'enfant est perçu comme un bien euh, économique et comme un objet de valeur sociale. Du coup, plus on a euh, d'enfants, plus on est considéré et moins on en a Donc, euh, au moins, on est considéré à plus forte raison quand on n'en a pas. À cause de cela, donc, euh, je pense que cette campagne va rendre service à la femme, va vraiment grandir le rôle de la femme. La souffrance qu'on a aussi en Guinée, c'est du côté de la belle famille. C'est très rare euh, les cas de violence directe de l'homme à sa femme. Mais la souffrance morale, psychologique viendrait de la belle famille euh, qui vont mettre vraiment euh, un poids, une pression qui peut devenir très stressant pour la femme. Et en tant que profane, je sais qu'une euh, une souffrance psychologique peut aussi bloquer euh, la femme à, à donner la vie. Plus, euh, évidemment, toutes les souffrances euh, faites aux femmes, euh, je pense euh, donc aux mutilations génitales féminines pour, la, pour laquelle vraiment en Guinée je me bats. Et la Guinée a été l'un des premiers pays en Afrique de l'Ouest euh, de lutter contre euh, ces mutilations génitales féminines. Fort malheureusement, ça persiste, euh, mais nous, nous allons continuer le combat afin qu'aucune femme ne subisse vraiment cette injustice. Encore une fois, merci à la Fondation Mère. Euh, je serais très heureuse de vous recevoir en Guinée, de participer à ce beau programme pour qu'enfin aucune femme ne se sente lésée dans ce monde. Merci beaucoup, la Fondation Mère. 
je ne pourrai pas revenir sur l'historique des activités puisque nous avons déjà réalisé ce que vous avez vu mais nous avions aussi tenu une réunion d'évaluation pour voir où nous en sommes avec les activités d'autonomisation des femmes. Et nous nous sommes rendus compte qu'il y a plus de faiblesses que de, et de points forts. Et c'est pour ça que nous aimerions que Merck puisse nous appuyer dans la mobilisation des communautés pour que nous puissions réaliser nos activités à l'intérieur du pays. IBE believe in educational theater and through educational theater I have uh, with a team of women and men we have achieved by going to schools and giving the information and as we speak they are busy writing in order for them to go and spread the information on infertility and how to go forward. Thank you so much for having me. Tell us exactly how this uh, uh, will contribute from your point of view and from your experience to Tanzania, uh, fertility care. I, I think because we have a very huge need in Africa, um, three months training is an ideal training program that any, anyone who thinks that can venture in the field of infertility should be able to, to be a part. So I would recommend to anyone uh, who would love to be part of uh, a successful story that Mac have decided to take uh, to, to apply for these kinds of training. And I think we'll definitely be able to help uh, our communities and especially women who are suffering from infertility. Merck, c'est le début d'une longue histoire qui s'écrit. Entre tous nos pays, je ne parlerai pas du chat seulement parce que l'union fait la force. Et quand nous regardons nos premières dames, comment, malgré leur agenda chargé, se préoccupent de toutes ces questions, notamment la question de la fertilité aujourd'hui. J'avoue que c'était une question qu'on n'osait pas évoquer en public. Mais euh, aujourd'hui, avec Merck, le fait de l'évoquer en public va résoudre beaucoup de problèmes et rétablir les femmes qui n'ont pas la chance d'avoir des enfants dans leur dignité, parce que c'est bien, bien de ça qu'il s'agit. Le vaccin, c'est le vaccin de l'humain, qui target les femmes de 9 ans à 15 ans, et le screening du cancer de la cancer, il n'y a rien. Parfois, les gens ne savent pas qu'ils ont le cancer, jusqu'à ce qu'il arrive à un stade qui est très tard. And there is no oncologist, or how many oncologists? No, no oncologists. There's none. Okay, so it will be a great opportunity to it's have both. yes, exactly. candidates to for have Mark with us. Yes. Yes. yes, we have a university. Yes, that turns out doctors. Yes, but, but no the specialties. It's very sophisticated. Yeah, yeah training. It's no speciality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just general doctors. Yes. Yeah, yes. medical doctors. Mm -hmm. So Mark coming in to collaborate with the Gambia will be a, a, an advantage to us. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Concerning the cancer. D'abord, merci beaucoup, parce que, comme vous le savez, notre pays est en train de sortir, de s'efforcer pour sortir d'un grand conflit. Le système de santé est par, terre. est par terre. Et cet appui arrive dans ce contexte. Pour nous, ce partenariat vient contribuer à la revitalisation du système de santé. Et par rapport au cancer, le cancer était encore plus inexistant, presque. Inexistant. On a un registre... Euh, euh, on a un, un cancérologue qui vient d'être formé ouais. et il y a tout à faire on doit de, de, de développer un programme contre le cancer donc ce partenariat pour nous va nous permettre d'avoir un programme national sur le cancer d'avoir les ressources et nous comptons beaucoup sur vous pour vraiment avoir un programme comme celui-ci parce que je suis persuadé qu'il y a beaucoup de femmes qui meurent de cancer Juste tell us an idea uh, of course uh, you also have done great achievement for uh, uh, finding uh, the wonderful lady, Honorable uh, Margaret, the uh, uh, chairperson of the National Assembly of Namibia and a great example for women empowerment to be the champion of Merck more than a mother. So I want you to elaborate on that for our audience. Merck Foundation and the More Than a Mother initiative, it's a holistic approach towards women health. We look at it with a critical eye that we would like to advance women in general. Their health 
in general. So uh, it's why I want to use Mark, the foundation, and the more than a mother, as a vehicle that we transform the concept of fertility, infertility in our community and also the healthcare provision to women in our country in terms of access to oncological services, especially the screening, the, the treatment, at a very low level before it become a disease or curative, before it moved to the curative department. I would also to like to acknowledge the support of uh, Mac Foundation to Tanzania through the, uh, the good work that uh, it's doing, uh, the training of, uh, uh, of uh, oncologists. Uh, as the, on the video here, we saw uh, three uh, uh, young Tanzanian uh, doctors being trained on the areas of, uh, areas of infertility. And uh, I think this is the kind of partnership that we are looking for, uh, the government and the, and the private sector. We have a very good uh, law and uh, policy on the private, public private partnership. And I think this is one of the areas that to, uh, we encourage. Uh, when, when, when I look at the whole perspective regarding various countries that we need to look into and going into, I think we need to strengthen the on the ground obstetricians and gynecologists. Unless we strengthen them, we are not going to deliver the whatever that we need to do because we won't have the infrastructure, uh, the personnel who are obstetrician gynecologists who we need to, for infertility treatment, whether it is oncology or whatever that needs to be done. We need to strengthen them and that is something which uh, FIGO is committed to and we are looking for partners who would help us to strengthen these obstetricians and gynecologists in various countries. And um, with um, a mark for mothers, which you've been doing superb work, and I, I must congratulate you, Russia, uh, uh, from all angles. It's not only infertility, oncology, for everywhere, the holistic, for women's health, the way uh, you have put in your efforts, uh, they are commendable. And I, I can assure you, FIGO will be 100% behind you for whatever that you Thank need. You. Uh, you're welcome to just talk to us and we will make sure that we will be available for you today. Thank you very much. Already the, you know that the Maharashtra University of Health Science started MOU with you and only we are promoting all the trainees for that. We too are your thank you to Russia that he has already, she has already taken a part in diabetes, hypertension, then oncology and everything and we have got this MOU about training also. I had a word with uh, Dr. Kailash also about the Tata Bengalan and he has given because with them also we have got the understanding about the training person. And you must have got the data that almost up till now six nurses from different African countries, Sub-Saharan Asia, they have been trained already. Then five unit oncologists has also been trained from them. And we see too in the future also from our side also the faculty is what you will be promoting that will, they will be also trained and their services will be also provided in the exchange program also. And the best thing is that ki, you are also promoting in the other part of the student undergraduate postgraduate also about this arousal about the all the various factors which you are taking under care and it's a very good that the, the Maharashtra University of Health Science will continue to have promote this MOU. Thank you very much. First of all, on behalf of the African Fertility Society, we have worked hard over the last two years or so to put the African voice out in the global stage, to put the voice of uh, African women out within the region itself and then to have this embedded within the national structures, the national government and healthcare systems. And I think we will continue to do that collaboratively with our partners, Mark Foundation, the Inter International Federation of Fertility Society and the WHO. And moving beyond today's and this conference we will be holding collaborative meeting in Kampala in March uh, 2018, uh, working collaboratively with the International Federation of Fertility Society, my own society, the African Fertility Society, and the parent Uganda Fertility Society. 